Hey guys, it seems like just about everybody is always looking for some great exercises and workouts they can do to master the little finger and learn how to use the entire span of their arm hand. And if that's what you're after too, this is what you should be practicing. <music> Hey there kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Without a doubt, the two most common problems that players run into whenever they're trying to get their fretting hand in shape is learning how to use the natural span of their fingers and finally control that stupid little finger. So in order to help you guys conquer those problems, I designed this simple exercise that uses two different scale patterns in the key of B minor. It really focuses very heavily on learning how to stretch those fingers out and learn how to use your little finger properly. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the exercise first, then we're gonna double back and talk about some of the technical details to get your fretting hand sharper than ever. But before we get into it, let's hear it again at Septad Speed. Downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more are available to everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. This week, all of my patrons are going to get access to some very cool practice tracks that I made to go along with this exercise. Those tracks feature me playing this exercise at the original Real Dad speed that you heard at the start of the video, the mid-tempo stepdad speed, and a very super slow pep pep speed. Click the link in the video description to go straight to the Patreon page and grab those downloads so you can start improving your chops today. Thanks. Okay, so this exercise features two different three note per string scale patterns in the key of B minor. Most books and stuff like that would have you thinking about these as a B Aeolian scale and a C sharp Locrian scale, but scale pattern doesn't necessarily determine harmony. That's a whole nother discussion in itself right there. So what I want you guys to think about is that you're playing the notes of the B minor scale, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, in two different positions. So we have the first position. And the second position. So whenever we play a three note per string scale pattern like that, we essentially end up with a low note, a middle note, and a high note on every string. Low, middle, high, low, middle, high, low, middle, high, low, middle, high, and so on. For the first part of this exercise, I want you to go from the lowest note on the low E string in the first pattern, go to the highest note next, and then we're gonna walk back down to the low E string. That's a total of four notes. Low, high, walk, down. On the next string, we're going to do the opposite of that. We're going to play highest, lowest, walk, up. So we have a pattern here that goes low, high, walk, down, high, low, walk, up. Continue that through the next set of strings here. Low, high, walk, down, high, low, walk, up. Now we're on the B string here. We're going to start on the low note. Low, high, walk, down. Then the high E string here, high, low, walk, up. So all together through the first position ascending, it's gonna sound like this. Low, high, walk, down. High, low, walk, up. Low, high, walk, down. High, low, walk, up. Low, high, walk, down. High, low, walk, up. Now after that, we're gonna shift up to the second position of the scale that we learned, which descending would sound like this. And we're gonna keep that same phrasing concept going here. So we're gonna start off here on the D note on the high E string, and we're gonna play lowest, highest, walk, down. When we go to the B, we're gonna play high, low, walk, up. Go to the G here and play low, high, walk, down. D string is going to be high, low, walk, up. Low, high, walk, down on the A, and then lastly, high, low, walk, up on the low E. And 
that should all be alternate pick, starting with a downstroke, by the way. This is four notes per string, so you can essentially just play down, up, down, up, and copy paste that string to string. After you're done descending down that second position, you can just hop back down here to the B note and restart the entire thing. Back to low, high, walk down, high, low, walk up. So all together, you should have this. And like I said, the great thing about this exercise is, is that if you find those stretches too difficult in that position, you can always move those two scale patterns up to make them easier or move them down to make them more difficult. All right, so now that you got the exercise down, let's talk about some of the technical stuff that's gonna get you playing at the best. So I can't tell you how many times I've seen a beginner player trying to play these shapes and they go for those big stretches and it's like everything they can do to even reach, you know, across three frets or something like that. So these two whole step shapes like seven, nine, 11, just seem completely impossible for them. People start freaking out and thinking that their hands are too small to play guitar, but let me tell you some of the best advice that my wife has ever given me. It's not the size, it's what you do with it. Simply put, it is your hand positioning and not your genetics that determine your success whenever you're playing big stretchy scale patterns like this. And the crazy thing is, is that 99% of the time, it's not that their hands are too small to play the guitar, it's that everyone's hands are too big to play the guitar. Okay, dig this. The back of the neck is nice and smooth and round, right? So a lot of players, whenever they pick up the guitar, they kind of grab it like it was a baseball bat because it just fits into the palm so nicely. While that's a really comfortable grip, and that is something that we use a lot of times, especially when we're doing big bends and stuff and need to get some leverage, it's actually the worst possible way that you can hold the neck of the guitar if you're trying to stretch. Whenever you grab the neck with that baseball bat kind of grip like that, right, it puts the base of your palm, this line right here at the bottoms of your fingers, it puts that right up against the edge of the fretboard, which is nice and comfy because you got a lot of contact with the neck and stuff. But here's the deal. Take that position, right, just grabbing the neck like a ball bat, and now straighten your fingers up. Now that you're in this position, you'll notice that your fingertips, the fretting surfaces that we use to push the strings down, are now actually like an inch or so away from the low E string. That means our fingers are now way too tall to be playing guitar. So that if you want to actually get them on the strings, you have to essentially cut them in half and bend them like that just to get them on the neck. And whenever you take those nice big long fingers that you got right there, and cut them in half to get them on the strings, that's where your trouble comes from whenever you're trying to reach these big stretches. When every knuckle on your fingers is bent like that, you just simply can't reach more than three or four frets at a time. So let's go ahead and fix that problem up like this. Okay, go ahead and take your guitar neck there and put it in that baseball bat kind of grip, right? Again, our palm is right up here on the side of the neck. Straight fingers like this, right? Again, flipper hand. Now what I want you to do is to just slowly lower your hand down just like this, until your fingertips are actually on the strings. That's naturally gonna make your thumb go down lower on the back of the neck too, you know, I'm now kind of in the middle point of the neck. And you'll notice that my fingers are still nice and long, and they're on the middle strings of the guitar without having to be cut in half like they were initially. Okay, so let's do that again. Grab the neck, just like it was a baseball bat, that puts the base of your fingers right up here against the edge of the neck, you know? and straighten the fingers out so you get that flipper hand and then just lower your entire forearm until your fingers are on the strings. Now check this out, if I was to pull these fingers away, here's what you'd see. You see how the hand is no longer touching the neck. I don't have that, you know, palm to neck contact like that. I've got a little bit of room for the Holy Ghost between my palm and the edge of the fretboard. And now that I'm in this position, I can use the natural length of my fingers to make those big stretches happen. Again, if I take that position I'm in right now, which is stretching from five to seven to nine, and try that with my hand right up against the neck, it's just not happening. But as soon as I lower that flipper down so that my fingertips are actually on the strings and not above them like they are here, as long as I lower that down to where they're on the strings, I can make that stretch no problem. And this is where a lot of misinformation about hand position starts. Because one thing that I hear people say all the time is that when you play guitar, your thumb should be low on the back of the neck, right? But here's the thing, it's not really that that's the solution. Because you can still have your hand flat up against the neck so you get your little cut in half fingers like we talked about before. You can do that and have your thumb low and still have total garbage hand position. It's not really that the location of the thumb matters that much. It's that whenever we bring the palm away from the neck, again, there's that space we were talking about right there, it naturally puts your thumb on the back. So it's not necessarily just the thought of, yeah, put your thumb lower, 
it's take your whole hand lower, that way your fingertips are actually on the strings. Now your mileage may vary here. I have pretty average sized hands, but whenever I'm doing these big stretches for three note per string scales, usually my thumb and my middle finger are kind of aligned with each other. You can see that they're kind of in a line like that. Typically whenever I'm playing three note per string scales, that's kind of what it looks like. Now that your hand is in the right position to do some guitar yoga and stuff, I want to talk to you guys about the importance of spanning the fingers, or as I sometimes call it, the bear claw technique. So if you take your fingers there and think about like a bear claw position, right, ah, like that, it naturally puts space in between your fingers, you know? You could also go into your stepmom's boudoir and borrow some of those little, you know, foam blocks that she puts in between her toes whenever she's painting her toenails for she and your dad's hot date on Friday. Those would work great as a visual representation of the kind of space I'm talking about. Again, think bear claw, create space between the fingers. Don't let them bunch up. And I'm not saying like force your fingers as far apart as humanly possible either. That's gonna create a lot of tension, which we don't want whenever we're doing acrobatic stuff on the guitar. Just try to comfortably create a little bit of space between every finger, just like that right there. That hand position is especially gonna help you get those big, wide, two whole step stretches. I always recommend that you play those with fingers one, two, and four. I see beginners a lot of times want to play those as one, three, four, like that, because typically if they see a note on the seventh fret and then a note on the ninth fret, they'll use their third finger for it, so it just kind of makes sense to go seven, nine, eleven, like that, right? A lot of players find this stretch of going first finger, second finger, fourth finger to be a little bit tricky. About the only player that I've ever seen that successfully does the whole step, whole step, you know, stretches with their first, third, and fourth fingers is Paul Gilbert, and his hands are ginormous. So if you wanna feel an easy way to understand why we're doing these shapes as one, two, four, instead of one, three, four, try this out. Okay, because we're covering so many frets and we only have four fingers here, that means somebody's gonna to have to do a difficult task and stretch a whole step. It's either these guys or it's these guys. Make a peace sign with your first two fingers. Sorry to my UK viewers right now. I don't mean this personally right now. Make that stretch happen with these two fingers and then try to do the same thing with these two fingers. I'm sure that you'll find this is a hell of a lot easier than that. So considering that these two guys are a little bit more agile for moves like that, let them do the hard work and do the whole step stretch and leave the easy stuff for your little finger. I designed this exercise specifically to make you go from your first to fourth fingers as much as humanly possible. See, whenever a lot of players play through scale patterns straight like this, they have this tendency to kind of ball all the fingers up in one spot and kind of deploy them one by one. Then they ball them up and set them down as the scale pattern goes. Whenever you're playing these shapes, you're always gonna be going either from your first straight to your fourth or from your fourth straight to your first. That means that those fingers have to be already kind of on the field, you know? You're not gonna want your fingers to look like this when you start this exercise, because you're going straight from seven to 10. You don't wanna have to dive for it like that, right? Keep those fingers naturally already kind of spanned out. Again, bear claw, right? Keep some space in between those fingers like that. Keep the palm low on the neck, that way you can reach those things. You'll notice as I played that phrase that my fingers were all kind of staying locked onto their particular frets. My first finger is there at the seven. And meanwhile, even before I used the third and fourth finger, they were already kind of spanned out and hovering above the ninth and 10th frets respectively. The way that that is phrased is gonna demand that you keep that little finger extended out, you know, and those fingers kind of spanned out like we've been talking about. It's gonna help you get that thing in control and keep your fingers close to the board where you need them. So yeah, I would say overall, whenever you practice that exercise, think first about taking that hand position down to where your fingertips are actually on the fretboard and your palm isn't contacting the side of the neck. Think about that bear claw position, hand spanning thing. Again, don't force it. Don't make your fingers stretch apart like that. Just take your natural hand position and gently add some distance in between those fingers right there. Well, there you go, guys. A great exercise for the left hand to get you guys stretching using the natural length of your fingers and finally giving that little finger something to do. Thanks a ton for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for new content coming at you every single week and ring the bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold. You guys can get taps for this over on my Instagram page at Ben Eller Guitars. Just search for hashtag weekendwankshop270 
or you can get the downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more by supporting my channel over on the Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Thanks again for tuning in. It's been fun. Now get that guitar and go practice. Less clicking, more picking.